Brian, I think one of the questions I get the most as a journalist is where do we get our stories? Yeah, um, yeah. This story was one that you received via email. Yeah, so um, Kathy Johnson, who lives in Johnson County, she had emailed us about um, her husband. Her husband had been killed in a car wreck just weeks before she had emailed mm. us. And when we started looking into the, the crash, um, investigators say that he was the passenger in the car um, and they were driving out on a farm to market road in Johnson County and there was a horse in the middle of the road and so the driver had swerved, the car ended up flipping, it just so happens there was a cement truck. Um, so her husband, Marshall Johnson, was killed you know, and, and we went out to visit with Kathy and it's always, those are, as you know, are always so tough, though, those interviews. Um, and she's, you know, telling us about, you know, they've been married 22 years. She was mm. showing us pictures of them in Belize. They were actually making retirement plans. They were gonna move to Belize. Oh my goodness. And so here's, here's this woman who, um, really she's dealing with the new reality uh, mm -hmm. I mean, her whole plans, her life has all changed and she's dealing with this tremendous tragedy. And yet she wanted to talk to us because of the confusion with this crash, with the loss, mm -hmm. um, in terms of who was liable and whether that horse was allowed to be in the road or had mm -hmm. the right of way. And she was just, she didn't want to see other people go through the same confusion and frustration as she did. And so what we found is we started looking into um, this idea of, of fencing laws here in Texas. So Texas, by default, is open range. That means that livestock have the right of way to roam free in wow. Texas. Now, over the years, really starting back in the late 1800s, counties could go back and pass what's known as stock laws, which are, are fence laws. And these laws, you know, some say, hey, anywhere in our county you have to fence in. Some of the stock laws say in these parts of the county you have to fence in your livestock and others say well if you have cattle and horses and mules have to be fenced in but these other animals don't so they're really confusing these these laws and we found that no one really knows them in a lot of counties lawyers even judges and so that's where we get all of this confusion and you really had to dig deep to find some of these laws it wasn't like yeah. getting online and finding it no, we found that there, you know, so you would think of this day and age, there'd be like a website that you could right. just look up or you could go to the county website. Well, that, that wasn't the case. And there were some counties that when we called the county clerk, they told us they don't know where they're at. They said they're probably wow. buried in commissioner's court meetings that are back in the 1870s. Mm -hmm. um, we actually went out to Tarrant County to see in person their stock laws and they're handwritten. You know, they have little scribbles in the margin and they're using creeks and rivers and outdated precinct lines as boundaries. And so even when you can find the law, trying to figure out that and how that pertains to a car accident now, 150 years later, wow. is difficult. Yeah, I thought that was so interesting in your story, yeah. just to look at those laws and how they're so beautifully written, but so yeah. old inside those books. Right, right. Something else that fascinated me is it's always interesting. Your story went on in our 10 o'clock newscast. We air 10 to 1030. Before 11 o'clock, we were hit with a lot of emails, comments and questions yeah. on Facebook. So I'd like to go through just a few of those with you. Yeah. Um, one of them really bothered me. Car accidents bother me anyway. But this yeah. picture that was sent to us from Chris. Yeah, isn't that a crazy picture? His yeah. best friend is involved yeah. in an accident and he writes he survived his encounter late one night outside of Rockwall on his way home. A cow did this damage? Yeah, I mean that's, you know, I was surprised by as many people that responded to us saying that they've had these experiences where they've been out on the road. It's usually at night and they've run into to livestock, stray, stray cattle on roads. Wow, okay. You know, another one that um, Frank Wilson had sent me an email um, late last night saying, you know, he was, he was going to work and an 800 pound bull ran out in front of him. This is on Farm to Market Road 2933 out kind of northeast of McKinney. Um, he said his insurance though had to pay for the bull and he lost the only vehicle he had and had no money Oh, that's heartbreaking. 800 pounds. And did you have a picture? Yeah, we, we have the picture of that. And you can see the, the picture. I mean, that is incredible that 
that he was able to walk away from that. That's what I'm thinking. Amen. He survived that and, accident. And I think one of the, the common themes with a lot of these um, folks that are riding in is they're saying that when I got through, you know, I'm thankful that I'm alive, that I have survived mm -hmm. this, this accident. But then I kind of get hit of being told, hey, I'm responsible for paying for that, that livestock. I'm responsible for re replacing that cattle. And an 800 pound bull is not cheap by any means to replace. Um, and so I think that was a shock for a lot of these people. And I think that's what they were sharing with us in a lot of these emails, just the surprise by, hey, I never knew in, in unincorporated Collin County that it's open range, that I would be responsible if I hit livestock. I think it's something a lot of people didn't know, and that's why we've hit such a hot button with some of our viewers. Yeah. There's a question here I want you to answer. Um, this is from Sharon in an email. She says in December in Collin County, she was traveling and down a road hit a cow and it did $7,000 worth of damage to her car. So her question to you is, do you know the laws for cattle being out on a county road, not a farm market road or private road in Collin County? Yeah, so so real quick, the distinction between farm to market and county road. Um, farm to market is operated by the state, the state of Texas, okay. tax dot, and then a county road, obviously, it's the county. In Collin County, Collin County, surprisingly, does not have any stock laws. So it is open range. Cattle have the right of way to roam free um, in the in unincorporated parts of the county. Cities have their own fencing laws. And so in this case, it's a it's a county road. It's not a US highway, because that's a little different, but it's a county road. So yes, that cattle, that cow had the right of way um, according to the law. And so in her accident where she ended up hitting it, she is, you know, according to the law, she's responsible. That's what the law says. You know, we always have to tell the other side, and we've yeah. also heard from ranchers here who have their very own perspective yeah. about all of this, um, yeah. basically saying, hey, we were there first, or right. we lived here first. Um, this is from Raymond. This was actually posted on our Facebook, and he yeah. says, I have signs on my property warning you there are cattle on the property when you cross. Hit a cow, you just bought my blue ribbon cow. Don't like it, move the road. Been that way since 1928, yeah. goes back in yeah. time. So I think a lot of people, their initial reaction is, oh gosh, how can we have open range? You know, do, we need to require these ranchers to, to fence them in. But then when you talk to ranchers and you, you, you hear from uh, ranchers like this, you begin to understand kind of their side of it. And a lot of these ranches, as he mentioned, we found out, I mean, they were there long before these farm to market roads mm -hmm. or county roads. And so the county or the state came in and said, hey, we're putting a road through your property and so now they're saying you're going to make us then also fence in and some of these and we had mentioned this in our story last night some of these ranches um you know large ranches you may have water on one side of of the the county road or the farm to market well if you fence that off on both sides of the road how are the cattle supposed to get over there and in many cases i mean you've got these large ranches here in texas it's costly yeah you're going to put up you know, 50, 100 miles of fencing on both sides mm -hmm. of a road. I mean, that can put ranchers out of business. And a lot of them told us, hey, it's just not, you know, we were here first. You need to drive careful. You need to know your area. You know, it's unfair to be putting these laws and this burden on us when we were here first is a lot of what we're hearing from ranchers. Always two sides. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I noticed a lot of the emails and this may kind of go outside the scope of your story. Deer, not livestock. But a lot right. of the emails ask us about deer. Do you have any yeah. background or did you do so, some research? So yeah, and so when we when we were looking into, we were looking into, we pulled a lot of statistics on and pulled a lot of crash reports on um, wrecks caused by, by animals. Okay. It, and there is a distinction, there is a separate category for wildlife compared to livestock. Wildlife, there are actually more accidents caused by collisions with wildlife, mainly deer, and a lot of those are in the hill country and in, in South Texas, having lived in San Antonio for a while, I can tell you the white-tailed deer are everywhere, so you gotta mm -hmm. be on the lookout. But that's, you know, a lot of people had mentioned, you know, that to us. That's, that's a little different, but it's, it's a good reminder that it, yes, it's not just livestock. You got to be also on the lookout for for wildlife. Mm.
It's frightening. You need to be watching the road at all times, yeah. right? And that's what yeah. some of the people on Facebook, I think, were telling us, just kind of continuing with some of the comments here, Brian. Um, how about you guys pay attention to the roads and surroundings? So Brian is blaming viewers there. Yeah, so... Uh, not you, Brian. Brian right, on Facebook. Right, right. Yeah, not, not me. Um, you know, one of the things that we saw a lot of comments like that, people saying, hey, just pay attention to the road, you know, get off your phone. And, and yes, you know, everyone that we, we talked to said, obviously there is a responsibility of, of drivers, uh, any driver, you need to be aware. But in a lot of these cases, when you read these accident reports, they're at night, they're on these dark county roads, and oftentimes it's a black cow or a, a dark horse. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's not as, as easy or as, as simple. You know, some of them are, you know, right around a turn and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So um, there is kind of both sides. I mean, th there is responsibility there on both but sides. But it's hard to see. Yeah, uh, yeah there's no lights on those. Yeah. So someone else writes, changing the open range law will not change a thing. Yeah, and that's what we heard um, from a lot of people because um, even ranchers say, hey, it's inevitable. Um, you can put up whatever fence and cattle are going to get out. In fact, someone on Facebook had posted a, a video of a bull jumping like a seven foot fence. It was, it was crazy. It was kind impossible. of one of those. Um, we're still trying to verify, <laughs> but, but a lot of people say, hey, it's livestock. And right. if you've ever been around cattle or stuff, they're going to find ways to get out. So mm -hmm. it's inevitable. And so there is the argument of, hey, you know, regardless, you can put up you know, you can have fencing laws across the whole state. There's still going to be straight cattle. It's just going to happen. It's interesting you're saying that because one of these last comments I wanted to talk to you about. He says, if your fence is in good shape and your cattle still get out, no problem. If your fence is falling over and they get out and somebody hits them, then you should be liable. Yeah, and that, that seems to kind of be kind of a middle of a road um, approach. And what we, what we also heard a lot of it is you know, when you get down to liability, it's also um, knowing whether your livestock was roaming free in some areas where you're supposed to have fence laws and whether you had an adequate fence. Um, so there's, it really gets murky in, in some of that. But I think what we really saw with a lot of these comments is I think when you sit down and you try to hear the other side, you try to hear the ranchers and the, you know, the ranchers kind of hear drivers, I think you can kind of see both sides of this.